All right. Uh, so far, we have seen uh, pay to public key hash, basic transactions. Then we have seen how the multiple signatures works, the multi-signature algorithms. Then we talk about pay to script hash, which actually allows us to perform these multi-signature operations in an easier way. But now, uh, at the beginning, I told you that if I create such huge transactions or complex transactions, it will be hard to manage. So it will be fantastic if I can you know, create multi-signature uh, schemes where the resulting signature looks like a single signature. So it will be very efficient and easy to use such a technique. So Schnorr signatures actually allow such a technique because due to its structure, we can perform key aggregation so M people can combine their public keys and sign a single message, which would look like as if it is a single signature. And it, at the end, it will have a Bitcoin address starting with one, but instead maybe M people signed it. So this is the good thing. And this is actually added to Bitcoin very recently. So the last update to Bitcoin was in 2017, but we received a new update in 2021 in November, which actually added the Schnorr signature. So the update was called Taproot. It provided a few more functionalities. So it added the Schnorr signature. So instead of elliptic curve digital signatures, we can use the same elliptic curve, but perform Schnorr signature instead of digital signature algorithm. So there's a very simple difference between them. Actually, Schnorr kind of claims the idea belonged to him because when Schnorr introduced the signature scheme, he patented it so nobody could use it until 2008. And uh, digital signature algorithm or the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm was freely available. So this is why everybody used it. So when the Bitcoin was invented in 2008, the patent expires, expired for Schnorr signature. So actually Satoshi, could say that, okay, let's use Schnorr signatures instead of elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. But he didn't, most probably because uh, elliptic curve digital signature algorithm was standard for a very long time. So people was confident that it was secure, but Schnorr signatures weren't that popular due to its patent. So this is why most probably he didn't choose this. But now the patent expired, so we can edit. So this, Signature algorithm is added to uh, Bitcoin in 2021 in November, but this also allowed us to perform key aggregation. So the designers provided an uh, algorithm called Music, which actually allows public key users to combine their public keys. So let's first start with the main algorithm, the Schnorr signature scheme. So I will use the Multiplicative group, so all of the notations will be in multiplicative notation as we did for the digital signature algorithm, okay? So then we can convert this into elliptic curves, but let's look at the basic definition. So this uh, signature scheme was introduced in 1991. The Schnorr signature scheme uses a cyclic group G of prime order P. It has a generator G of the group and the hash function H, okay? So you uh, create a private and public key pair, small x and capital X inside this set, uh, starting from zero to P1. So where uh, the small x is actually your uh, private key. So you randomly choose it, take the, you know, multiply G with itself X many times and obtain the capital X, which will be your public key, as we did in the Algama encryption algorithm, right? Now, to sign a message M, the signer randomly chooses R in ZP and computes H of X of R M, which, require, which provides C, then you have R plus C X, okay? Okay, so this should be, I think, the small r. Otherwise, it will it wouldn't mean 
anything. Okay, so the result is your signature R and S. So S is computer Z, R, your random number plus C times X. C is the hash of this part. So you might actually ask what is the difference between the digital signature algorithm and this one. Actually, there you would have a multiplication with an inverse of K, which was randomly chosen. Right? Due to that multiplicative inverse multiplication, we cannot actually combine keys. I mean, we cannot perform key aggregation in the digital signature algorithm, but in the Schnorr case, we can actually perform key aggregation, which we will see in the following slides, okay? So the signature verification works as follows. The, here is the signature, SNR. You calculate the S power of G, and you check if it equals to R times X to the C. And if it is, then the signature is verified, okay? So let me talk about how this is added to Bitcoin. So this is from Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 340. So Bitcoin has traditionally used elliptic or digital signature algorithm and the signatures provided from this algorithm. Over the elliptic curve, which we talk a lot, which is called as SEGP256K1. And uh, Bitcoin uses SHA-256 for hashing these transactions, right? So elliptic curve digital signature algorithm has a number of downsides compared to the Schnorr signatures over this elliptic curve. First one is provable security. Schnorr signatures are provably secure. In more detail, they are strongly unforgeable under chosen message attack. This is shortened as SUF CMA. Okay, so there's an extra security in Schnorr signatures compared to elliptic or digital signature algorithm. They are also non malleable. This security of Schnorr signatures implies that they are non malleable. What we mean that is explained in the elliptic or digital signature algorithm as follows. ECDSA signatures are inherently malleable. A third party without access to the secret key can alter an existed valid signature for a given public key and message into another signature that is valid for the same key and message. So this topic is actually discussed in this uh, Bitcoin improvement proposal. Such an attack actually never used and actually doesn't cause much of a problem, but still, uh, Schnorr signatures are non malleable. This is a property test. But more importantly, it has linearity. So this is where we use the you know, key aggregation. Schnorr signatures provide a simple and efficient method that enables multiple collaborating parties to produce a signature that is valid for the sum of their public keys. Okay, so that is the whole idea. Here I listed the uh, BIP link. So if you're interested, you can read the whole Bitcoin improvement proposal uh, description and see why Schnorr signatures are somewhat better than these signatures. Okay, so why do we need for key aggregation? While using the predicate language to implement multi signatures is very flexible, it is inefficient in terms of size, computational cost, and privacy. Blockchain contains every transaction since the system's inception, resulting in a final state, the set of unspent coins that we simply say UTXO set. As, as a global consensus system, kept in check by the ability for every participant to validate all updates to the ledger, the size of signatures and predicates, and the uh, computational costs for verifying them are the primary limiting factors for the for its scalability. So the scalability of Bitcoin is discussed a lot. You know, we always mention that you can perform maybe 70 operations, 70 transactions in a second due to this limit and so on, because we say that a block size has one megabyte of limit. And due to the size of these transactions, there is limited amount of transactions you can perform. So if you perform a transaction that has a huge size, actually in that block, people cannot uh, perform more transactions because you're actually using the huge part of that one megabyte. So having this kind of huge signatures is a limiting factor for its scalability. 
The size of predicates is even more important as they are part of the unspent uh, coins set that is maintained by every node since they are keeping this list in their RAM. The computational requirements for signing or the communication overhead between different signers are far less constrained. So uh, here, what we are trying to say is that if M people signs a transaction, whenever you perform the transaction, whenever you redeem it, you have to provide M signatures. So all of the nodes have to check M signatures, right? So this is uh, computationally not good as checking a single signature. So if we can combine them so that in a way, uh, all of the nodes will still check a single signature, but actually it will belong to M signers. And here at the signer side, you know, getting together and performing more operation doesn't provide, uh, introduce much of a problem to them, right? So here we are transferring to complexity, the time complexity from the nodes to the signers. So that is the whole idea for the key aggregation. So let's look at the music Shunor multi signatures that is actually used in the Bitcoin since 2021 November update. I think it became effective around 14th of November. And this kind of stuff actually affects the price of the Bitcoin, but this course is not about it. So I'm not going to give you any investment advice. So let's look at the parameters and see how this Shunor multi signatures work. Okay. G is a cyclic group of order P. G is a generator of, of G, sorry for the typo. N is the number of signers, so this can change. So these are fixed, but of course in your multi-signature, the number N can be three or 15, it depends on you. And M is the message to be signed, okay? So each signer randomly chooses a private key, XI in the set P, and they compute their public key, capital XI, by taking the X i power of G. So this uh, technique is provided in this paper published in 2019. You can check the security of this technique there, okay? But I will just move on to only the key generation signing and verification, okay? I won't talk about the security much. So if you're interested, you can read it. So key generation is as simple as that. Everybody randomly chooses their private key and compute their public key. Now, when we are going to sign with M people, we keep them keep our public keys in a set L. So L be the public keys of N signers. So signing works like this. Every signer computes hash of the sets and I user, you know, computes their public keys hash and obtain AI. Okay. Here, instead of writing H for the hash function, I put H egg for the short of aggregation. So actually when signing or doing other operations like aggregation here, we need to use different hash functions, okay? I will come back to this. So here I'm using H aggregation, okay? So everybody compute small AIs. Then signers compute the aggregated public key by a, calculating AI power of XIs and then multiplying all of them. So this is where you actually aggregate all of the keys and turn them into a single public key, X tilde. So this is the property of Schnorr signatures. You cannot do it with the uh, digital signature algorithm, okay? So I signer randomly chooses RI, RI, sorry, in ZP, computes capital RI, which is the, RI power of G, and also computes the hash of this H com. So actually here you are committing to your number that you randomly chose, okay? And calculate TI. So first you send this TI, signers send TI to each other. So they actually receive commitment from all of the signers, okay? Upon reception of these RIs, if everybody sends everything, then you actually check if these are correct by calculating, you know, H uh, com, 
commitments are right and check if their commitments are correct. Okay. So first, all of them sends TI. Then you send all of your RIs and check if they are correct. And here you abort if equalities, only one of them even does not hold, you just abort it here. Okay. So uh, sometimes it might look strange to you know commit to it here. Instead of doing this process, uh, you know, you might think it will be enough to choose these arise and compute capital arise and send to each other. But if you do it, the security proofs inside the paper will not work. So we are actually performing an extra communication here. Here, everybody sends TIs to each other. Once you receive them, then you receive arise. So actually, you are in this algorithm performing three rounds of communication. Okay, I will come back to this. So art signer computes this, so they everybody multiplies all of the RIs and obtain a single R. They uh, sign this by the public key, their aggregated public key. This is the aggregated R's and the message. You obtain C. Then everybody calculates CI. So everybody has their AIs here. You know, just multiply this and perform this and send CI to all of the other cosigners. Now, this is your third communication part, actually. Now, since you received all of the SIs, you sum all of them, modulo P, and obtain an S. Now, your signature is this R and this S. Okay. So, I mentioned that there are three communications between all of the signers. In order to perform the signing process, you have to communicate with the signers in three rounds to all of the signers, okay? But at the end, you obtain a Schnorr signature. But the only thing actually changing is that if you were only a single person, you wouldn't perform this multiplication. You would use, simply use RI. <clears throat> and for the signature, you would have S. But since there are M people, here you are adding all of these SIs and you are multiplying all of the RIs. And for the public key, you multiplied all of them to obtain a single public key. So th this is the conversion of the Schnorr signature into a multi-signature, okay? So this music algorithm actually pro uh, introduces this. Verification works as follows. Given a multi-set of public keys L, a message M, and the signature RS, verifier computes aggregation hash of all of these again. So the verifier also computes AIs from XI and L. Verifier also computes X tilde, which is the aggregated public key. They also compute C from this input, calculating the hash signature. So then accepts the signature if S power of G, where you receive this from the uh, signature, equals the R multiplied with this, which is actually this, okay? Since you have all of these inputs, you can check if this is equal to it, okay? So if it is equivalent, then this means that the uh, signature is correct, okay? So once you m apply this into the Bitcoin, now this X tilde, will be the public key. So you will generate a Bitcoin wallet at the starting with one just by using this X tilde. So that is the whole idea, right? So whenever now, after this taproot update, whenever you look at blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain and see a, see a wallet at the starting with one, now actually you are not sure if it is a wallet address corresponding to a single public key or if it is an aggregation of public keys of like end users. So you have to go to the block and the transaction and see actually what is done there, okay? So this way actually it provides some kind of anonymity because if you don't have the full blockchain, you are only using a web page for looking at the uh, wallet addresses and so on. So this way you wouldn't understand if it is a multi-signature or not because the wallet address starts with one. That is the idea. 
So now let's talk about this hashing in the music algorithm. Uh, in the slides, you have seen that there's HCOM, HEC, and H6. So you can use actually three different hashing algorithms. And this algorithm, this way the protocol works. But we cannot simply use three algorithms. Like for instance, here, let's say we use SHA-256. Maybe here we use SHA-3-256. And maybe here we use a different hashing algorithm with 256 output. But this would be you know, cumbersome. So here what they do is as follows. Hash function HCOM is used in commitment phase. HEC is used to compute aggregated key. And HSIG is used to compute the signature. These hash functions can be constructed from a single one using proper domain separation. So it means that you can simply use a single hash function like SHA-256. But if you separate their domains, then it will work. If you don't do it, the security will be lost. And how do we separate a domain means as follows. Don't allow the same inputs to same hash function. So this way you actually avoid the using the same domain. Okay. So in BIP 340, you can again go and read it. Bitcoin uses tagged SHA-256 hashes. So it simply uses SHA-256 for all of these three. But what it does is that depending on the property like commitments, aggregated key or signature, it actually puts a tag in front of it and you know uh, appends it to the beginning of your message that is going to be hashed there. So you're actually, uh, depending on the context, you are adding a prefix. So here, as you said, as it says, this proposal suggests to include the tag by prefixing the hash data with SHA-256 of tag concatenated with Again, SHA-256 of tag. Here tag again comes from this part which you are using. So this way you are actually adding different prefix in different operations. So this way the input cannot be the same. So you are actually using different domains. That is the whole idea. Okay. So I took this picture from uh, William Professor Buchanan's web page. Actually, I also uh left the web page link here because it doesn't only contain the picture but it also uh, provides source code and examples where you can uh, really perform uh, music or multi-signature operations and it is very in informative but the picture is also helpful to us so far we always focused on the multiplicative group but in the elliptic curve it works like this so in this picture, it, as Professor Buchanan explains, Bob and Wendy, Wendy wants to sign the same message. So both of them have their uh, private and public keys. Here, the private key is just a number, and the public key is multiplication, scalar multiplication of this number with a point on the elliptic curve. So the public keys are elliptic key points. So uh, both of them independently perform Schnorr signature. So all of the R operations now, instead of taking K1 power of G, it performs point elliptic curve point addition. So the notation is turned into an additive notation. So both of them computes R1 and N2, R2. And actually, I think it should be S1 here and S2 here. So they actually add their Schnorr signatures together to obtain RNS. Okay, so this is their signature, and Alice can check the validity of it. So the resulting signature are just addition of R1 and R2 and S1 and S2 to produce RNS. Okay. Again, I recommend you to visit the web page and see how it is done. I think he does it with using Python. So you might be interested. So let me finalize this by talking about variants of music. So music actually comes in three flavors. So the first one is music that I talked so far about. So multi-signature scheme for Schnorr signatures with support key, key aggregation, which support key aggregation. 
This is used in Bitcoin since November 2021 via the Taproot upgrade. But uh, the designers also produced another version of this called Music 2. I told you that in the music, the signers have to communicate in three runs because actually their initial design had two runs. But after their initial design, some people uh, discovered the uh, flow in their proofs. So they have to add the third run to, so that their proofs works in order to have the security. But then they modified their algorithm. Now it's actually requires only two communications between the signers. So you might think that this is more efficient. And they also provided another version called music ND. Here ND means uh, actually deterministic nodes, I guess. So instead of randomly choosing a number, the nodes depends on the message and the signer's public key resulting in a deterministic signing. You know, in every signing process, we randomly choose a number. So the result actually signature depends on that choice. And we have to change this random number whenever we sign something here. The choice doesn't at our side, but that number actually depends on the message itself and the public key itself, okay? So this provides security against failures in randomness generation and virtual machine rewinding attacks. Sorry for the typo again. Also, this one also requires two communication runs. So this is somewhat important because in the past we have seen that some uh, wallet software couldn't produce random numbers due to a bug most in Java implementation of old Android version. So when some people perform two different transactions in two different days, they use the same num random number. So they signed the different transactions with the same random number. So 10 minutes later, all of their Bitcoins were stolen. So to avoid this kind of problems here, they actually suggested instead of randomly choosing it, let's make it dependent on the message and the public key so that they will be deterministic. So we will take the burden from random number generation from the users. So these are very recent topics, as you can see, published in 2019, 20, and 21. So if you're interested, you can look at these papers. But uh, in Bitcoin, we are using music, not the newer versions that are uh, published later than this Taproot upgrades.